One of the hallmarks of our reputation as a provider of security for the applications our customers create is that we support the creation of secure applications built on or with the widest range of apps, OSs, languages, compilers, and development environments. For example, I'm recording this particular demo in October of 2022. We were the first application security company to announce support for iOS version 16. At the same time, as of today, we still support building protections into apps built for iOS version 10. The current iOS version, iPhone 5C, runs. In this demo, I'll show an app built with and without protections on these wide range of OSs, and then I'll show what the disassembled, unprotected code looks like compared to the disassembled, protected code, so that you can see the benefit of adding protections to the apps you create. So here we see the Swift code in the sample application that we are going to protect. Note that the iPhone 5C Wikipedia page shows the current iOS version that the iPhone 5C runs is version 10. And I'll scroll up to show that we are indeed on the Wikipedia page for the iPhone 5C. Here we can take a look at the digital.ai AppSec for Mobile host and target page. At the top of this page, you'll see that we still, as of October 2022, support iOS version 10 to 16. Also note that we support iPadOS from the first OS to support iPadOS 13, as well as the first tvOS and watchOS versions. Let's take a look at the Xcode now so that we can see that we've selected to protect an app written for iOS 10, which means that this app will run on the iPhone 5C through to the newest iPhone 14. Now let's build and run our sample application with no protections or obfuscations applied. So here's the running application. I'll log in. Let me show some of the features in the app I'm running. I'll open a job. Here I'll show the map. And now I'll close the job. So I'll stop the app and now go out and archive. Here we see a successful archive. Now let's swap over to our terminal, and now let's build protections into our app. Okay, now we have a protected tech portal and can see at the bottom of the screen where the file is located. And here we see the protected app running. As I did for the unprotected app, I'll log in. And I'll show the same features and functions just so that we can see that even though the app is obfuscated, as I'll show in a moment, the app still runs as it should. I'll open a job. Here I'll show the map. And now I'll close the job. Now I'm going to pull up Ghidra, which is a reverse engineering tool created by and open sourced by the National Security Agency in the USA and is available on GitHub. Let's take a look at the decompiled unprotected code. If we look at the call graph in the unprotected version, we can see that it is small, meaning it's easier for a threat actor to read or decipher. Let's take a look at two more functions, each of which includes assembly instructions that can be easily Googled by anyone, including threat actors, and swapped or changed or edited to essentially perform whatever the threat actor wants the app to do instead of what it was meant to do. Here we can see a pretty logical call graph that is, again, relatively easy for a threat actor to interpret which functions are being called and where, and thus makes it easier for him or her to alter normal program control flow. Now let's take a look at the protected app in Ghidra. The entry part of the code, which before was just a fraction of the screen, takes up the whole screen. This is essentially a mess for a threat actor to interpret. And this change alone will make all but the most determined attacker give up and move on to an easier, unprotected target or app. In case that isn't enough to deter them, though, we also flatten the code, meaning if we take a look at the functions on the left, you'll see significantly fewer functions for the threat actor to interpret relative to the high number of functions I just showed in the unprotected code. Another obfuscation that we can um, use is to convert the normal function calls within the computed function calls. Whereas Ghidra's ability to statically analyze code allows it to point directly to function locations in unprotected code, in the obfuscated case, the static analysis fails 
and an attacker would need to perform the harder task of dynamically analyzing the code to understand the same control flow. Forcing attackers to perform this extra wor work for every function call greatly extends the amount of time that they would need to reverse engineer an app. So we just saw the wide range of OS versions that Digital.ai application security protects, as well as what protected and unprotected code looks like after it is disassembled in Ghidra. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about how to protect your apps from tampering and reverse engineering, please visit digital.ai contact to arrange a meeting.